Hi all, Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Anyway, I'll give all that AI stuff a rest for a while, and, and today's Phototech Tuesday will examine a complete post-process for an HDR landscape. Uh, we'll see how to combine three exposures into one high dynamic range image, and we'll complete all the image enhancements in Lightroom. So let's uh, roll up our sleeves and dive right in. So we're going to use this image. This is a uh, witch's hat in Iceland, a very iconic uh, landscape image. And uh, the, the, uh, the file on the left is, is actually an HDR uh, DNG, and uh, that was processed from three other shots. So let's take a look at that. Um, so I had set up the camera to do uh, an auto bracket at uh, one and two thirds exposure difference. And we start with an underexposed image, go for the uh, normal exposure as best we can, and then an overexposed image. We highlight all of these and then uh, come up to photo, um, photo merge HDR. And now we'll see the uh, photo merge preview dialog here. Creates a preview. And it's almost always good to have auto align on. I wasn't on a tripod. Uh, so the rapid bracket, uh, there can be subtle differences in, in position of the camera. Uh, auto align takes care of all that and lines up all the, the shots. And it gives us a preview. Um, your de-ghost amount here, uh, none, low, medium, high. I usually leave it on low. In, in this case, there is some water moving, and when you have a de-ghost amount in there, it will try to pick uh, a sharp uh, image from one of the exposures and favor it in the blended HDR. So we're going to leave that on low. And, uh, and then I'm just going to hit Merge, right? So I've already done this, so I'm going to cancel out of this. But normally, I would just hit Merge, and it would deliver a file that looked like this. So let's, uh, let's go through this. Let's uh, go into uh, Develop. And uh, you know, we're just going to start processing this like a normal uh, DNG file. But all the slider is going to be much more aggressive. So we'll be able to really darken down the sky just with the highlight slider. I'll just bring that all the way down. Um, and we can really open up the, the shadows. Uh, and, and now at this point, it's, it's, it's sort of flat. I might want to add more into the sky. But I notice, of course, that we have all these little figures that I'd like to remove. So I'm going to go over to um, my retouching tool here. And uh, we're going to use the uh, Content Aware Remove tool. This is um, right now my favorite way of doing this. So let's, uh, let's zoom in. Oops. We'll zoom in here to 100%. And I'll just paint around the items that I want to remove. So we'll just make sure we get fully outside of that. And like magic, it just kind of disappears. Um, does a really good job of filling in. Um, let's look. Oh, we have another figure over here. So we'll just do that. Make sure I just sort of surround the figure. And it, it does a really excellent job of filling in over here on the edges. Uh, get up get these people out of the way. And I have the red coat. That's Bobby down there. <laughs> let's let's take her out. Now, you notice that I've got a few little remnants left. Um, I found that let's let's just undo that. I found that if that happens, what you want to do is just take a little bit wider 
make sure you get well outside of the item that you want to remove. And that should do it. There you go. Much better. Do I have another one over here? I don't think so. I think I've got all of them. So let's let's zoom back out. All right, now that I've got those out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and finish um, the post-processing here. Um, at this point, I, I feel like it's it's gotten very flat looking, so I want to add contrast back. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is start working these presence sliders. We have a fair amount of like very high frequency little details, the grass and everything like that. So texture will, will tend to sharpen that kind of stuff up. Clarity is for bigger uh, transitions to get a little more contrast back in. So we'll just amp the clarity up and we can kind of see it's, it's pushing the highlights up and it's, it's adding some more detail into the shadow. So we're just going to go ahead and keep doing that. That looks pretty good. Um, we can maybe add back some some darks with the with the black slider i'm going to not overdo that at this point i do want to make the sky darker so it looks like we're going to need a mask for that this is a pretty good image to do that in so i'm going to go to the mask panel here and we'll mask for the sky and you can see I've given the, uh, the mask color a, a green color. Usually it's red. We'll put it back to red there and uh, close that off. Um, okay, so I want to darken down the sky, but I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. I'm going to um, use a secondary mask. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to intersect this sky mask with a linear gradient. Um, and the reason I want to do that is that I want to have the sky progressively darkened from the top down. And I have this mountain in here, so um, I'm, I'm kind of adding these two masks together. So as soon as I start dragging with the linear gradient, you can kind of see now the mask is, is coming down, but it doesn't go over the mountain, and I will stop right about there so that it's going to be just as light down here as this is now and then get progressively darker. So we'll come up here and we'll play with the exposure slider. Let's just, let's just darken that down. And I think uh, these clouds need some more structure. So let's go down to the effects and play around with clarity. We'll crank the clarity. Let's crank the dehaze on this. There you go. Now we're getting some clouds in there. Okay. That's starting to look good. Uh, let's go back. So I'm going to close that mask panel, and uh, let's let's work on our our uh, vibrance and saturation. Uh, I'm going to use the saturation slider. Let's just crank that up. The green's starting to come in there. That's looking pretty cool. Um, this foreground just getting on the verge of maybe too saturated. Uh, let's look at our color mixer. Now we could use point color here. Um, I'm going to try just using the regular mixer sliders here. And we have, we have this sort of green here. Um, I'm going to work the saturation on that green. Oh, it looks like we already have some, some saturation settings here. I'm going to reduce the saturation of this, this green just a little bit. And I'm going to increase the saturation of the yellow. There's, there's a lot of yellow and green, but I don't want this, these really rich Kelly greens to get too saturated, but I'm, I'm okay with this yellow coming up. So that's looking pretty good, and our blue is looking pretty good. So I, I think I'm okay. The, the last thing with the landscape image, I must always do this. Uh, so we're going to go over to Effects, and I'm going to do a little post-crop vignetting just to take the edges down just a little bit, and that helps pull the eye into the center of the frame. And uh, that's it. Okay, well, that was a pretty straightforward one. I think the things of uh, interest here are working the texture clarity and dehaze. If you, if you really need more contrast, that dehaze slider works great. We use some dehaze in the clouds 
in that sky and uh, that really brought in a lot of detail up there um, so that's it okay well that's it for now and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully this has provided some in inspiration for your own work uh, if you like this video please give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and ring the bell uh, so you don't miss another photo tech Tuesday Next week, we're leading our 12th Venice Carnival photo adventure. So I'll be taking a break from Phototech Tuesday, returning on the 20th. So stay tuned and bye for now.